Hello and welcome to the Marias Pass HO Scale layout. Today I want to share with you mainline operations across the layout, and to do this I will be simulating the movement of all the unit trains that are supposed to run during an operating session, including a unique head-end helper movement. In separate operations videos, I will cover the mixed freight, normal manned helper operations, yard switching, and the Columbia Falls road switcher. We start the day at the layout's only yard in Whitefish, Montana. The first train to leave is the eastbound Portland to Chicago Q train, led by BNSF 5538. On the rear end, a Heritage 1-9 serves as the remote distributed power unit. All eastbound trains, such as this one departing Whitefish, spend almost the entire journey climbing an average grade of roughly 1.5% from the lowest point here in Whitefish to the very top of the grade at Mariah's Summit. To help fight the grade, unit and intermodal trains typically have remotely controlled distributed power units, or DPUs, though we will see later in this video that manned helpers are also used. Alright, uh, 5538 East, I'm going to have you meet a westbound oil can there at S6, uh, but in the meantime, let's at least get you your warrant up to S6. All right, so this will be track warrant 2301-2301 to BNSF 5538-5538 East EAST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO proceed from East EAST, sighting switch Whitefish to West WEST Essex on Main MAIN track. We've only got one box marked for warrant 2301. That's box 2, over. Looking west, you can see the shop facility at the east end of Whitefish. In Columbia Falls, the tracks level out briefly, allowing the train to pick up a bit of track speed. And in the background, you can see the Weyerhaeuser medium density fiberboard plant, which is the main industry on the layout. As mentioned, operations at Columbia Falls will be the focus of a separate operations video. Around the corner from Columbia Falls, the train begins the climb through John F. Stevens Canyon at a location the railroad calls Belton, but is commonly referred to as West Glacier. Here, trains encounter Tunnel 4.0 and After pushing through Tunnel 3.9, the train emerges on the upper level at Essex, where it will hold the main line, anticipating a meet with the westbound train. BNSF detector, milepost 1185.05. Main 2, no defects. Repeat, no defects. Total axle two nine two out. At the summit of Marias Pass, a loaded westbound oil train with the Canadian National DPU begins the descent towards Whitefish. This vantage point highlights the unique vertical curve that delineates the east and west side of the mountain pass that I'm modeling.
The head end of the oil train begins to work down the toughest section of grade on the layout at a location called Blacktail. Here, snowshed number five protects the main line from avalanches during the winter months. Okay, uh, 8438, I got you a warrant uh, when you're ready to copy. This will be warrant 2302-2302 to be NSF 8438 West WEST, sorry, 8438. West WEST on October 1st, 2023. Next box 2 TWO proceed from West WEST Essex to West WEST siding switch Whitefish on main MAIN track. And next box 8 EITHT hold main track at last name point. Got two boxes marked for warrant 2302. That's 2 and 8. Over. Leaving Blacktail, the train passes the concrete foundation of Shed 12, which connects the scenes of Blacktail and Essex. Eventually, this narrow section of track will be covered by a wooden shed structure, much like Shed 5 at Blacktail. Back in Essex, the oil train gives its dynamic brakes a rest on level track as it passes the parked Q train. At the bottom of the grade, the oil train stops at Whitefish for a crew change. This terminates the train's westbound journey, but we'll see later in the session that the same consist will run as an eastbound empty oil train. As the oil train completes its run at Whitefish, the Q train continues its charge towards Summit and passes through shed number five at Blacktail. All right, 5538, I got your lights up to Summit, so have a good trip.
At Mariah's summit, the stack train crests the grade and disappears into the dispatcher's room. This is the end of the road for all eastbound trains because here the main line is actually a hidden reverse loop. All trains emerge ready to return to Whitefish in the westbound direction. Back at Whitefish, another eastbound is ready to follow the stack train up the grade. Next to depart is the empty grain consist bound for interchange with the CPKC at the border town of Sweetgrass, Montana. After firing up the prime mover, the switches are lined and BNSF 4313 East is ready to depart. I can get you up to Columbia Falls, but I'll have you hold there because there's a westbound intermodal coming down the hill. So when you're ready to copy, I'll uh, read you two warrants. So this will be warrant 2303-2303 to BNSF 4313-4313 East AST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO proceed from East AST siding switch Whitefish to East AST siding switch Columbia Falls on main MAIN track. And Xbox 8 EIGHT hold main track at last name point. Two boxes marked for warrant 2302, that's 2 and 8, over. Go ahead and get your second warrant here. This will be warrant 2304-2304 to BNSF 4313-4313 East AST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO proceed from East EAST siding switch Columbia Falls to West WEST Essex on main MAIN track and Xbox 7 SEVEN not in effect until after arrival of BNSF 55385538 West WEST at Columbia Falls. I've got two boxes marked for warrant 2304. That's two and seven, over. On the rear, a Canadian Pacific SD-70 ACU provides extra tractive effort. The dispatcher opts to hold 4313 at East Columbia Falls where it will meet the stack train returning westbound. And after getting to Columbia Falls, the train crew decides to fire up the prime mover on the second motor before tackling the tough grade ahead of them. At Mariah Summit, BNSF 5538 East continues through the reverse loop and becomes 5538 West. Glacier Dispatch to 5538. I've got you a clear shot down into Whitefish. I'm going to have you swing off the main there at Columbia Falls. Uh, there's an eastbound grainer waiting for you there. So if you're ready, uh, I can get you your warrant. This will be warrant, track warrant 2305-2305 to BNSF 5538 west WEST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO proceed from west WEST Essex to east EAST siding switch Columbia Falls on main MAIN track and Xbox 1010, clear main track at last name point. I've got two boxes marked for warrant 2305, that's two and ten, over.
back at Columbia Falls, east meets west. Here, the stack train is leaving the main line at Columbia Falls to take the lower level reverse loop. This allows westbound trains to arrive at Whitefish facing east, and in doing so, the train is completely recycled and ready to go for the next operating session. Now, BNSF 4313 East has clear tracks all the way to Summit and wastes no time picking up the throttle.
You'll notice that the east end of Shed 5 is guarded by a slide fence. The steep hill slope along these parts means that rock slides are a constant threat to the main line. At summit, 4313 finishes its eastbound climb as it heads through the upper reverse loop. Having turned around, 4313 now becomes a westbound loaded grain train. This train will pause briefly at summit before continuing west. In Whitefish, crews are hostling power consists in preparation for a rare eastbound coal movement. In 2022, a longshoreman strike at the Roberts Bank coal dock in British Columbia resulted in numerous loaded coal trains heading back east to customers that purchased the stranded coal loads. Some of those trains traversed Marias Pass, and I've chosen to incorporate this unique example into layout operations by modeling loaded coal hoppers and weighting each car to a hefty 9 ounces. As a result, the coal train requires lots of power to make the hill, just like the prototype. Typical westbound loaded coal trains run in a 3x1 or 2x2 power configuration. To add a bit of extra power for this eastbound move, the train will run in a 4x2 power configuration. BNSF 6625 and 3931 are the de facto helper set, which usually gets added to the rear of mixed freights or heavy intermodal trains. But today, the helper set will be placed on the head end of the coal train. The two other head end units are being borrowed from the terminated stack train, which will back into the yard and couple up to the helper set.
The Coltrane's rear DPUs will get snagged from the arriving Shelby to Spokane manifest, which works Whitefish Yard. First though, the two locomotive consists will dispose of its train on tracks four and five. In a separate operations video, we will see the yard crew build the Whitefish manifest, as well as the manned helper operations that are required to get the train up the hill. Currently, the Montana Railink unit is the only of these two locomotives configured with DPU lighting, so 4401 is being swapped to trail behind 3836. Now properly configured, the rear DPUs roll down the length of the yard and hook up to the rear of the coal train.
Next, the four lead units back to the first shortcut of coal cars and complete the consist. Now it's time to depart. This will be track warrant 2306 to 2306 to BNSF 6625-6625-EAST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO proceed from East EAST siding switch Whitefish to West WEST Essex on main track MAIN. I've got one box marked for warrant 2306, Xbox 2 over. We're back up at Mariah's Summit where the westbound grain loads begin to drop down grade. Out of sight and down below at Essex, the coal train takes to the siding to allow BNSF 4313 West to continue straight through to Whitefish.
We make our way back to Blacktail and catch the coal train leaning into the toughest part of the climb. After arriving at Summit, the two manned helper units cut away from the coal train and wait for the switch at Marias before drifting down grade. Unfortunately for the helper crew, the dispatcher has them hold at Essex because an empty oil train is about to depart Whitefish and clog up the main line. I'd like to dispatch to the helper crew. I'll get your lights here down into Essex. Um, but I'm going to have you hold the siding there for an eastbound oil can. Let's uh, just get your warrant copied now so you'll be ready to go. This will be track warrant 2307-2307 to BNSF 6625-6625 West WEST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO proceed from West WEST Essex to East EAST Columbia Falls on Main MAIN track and Xbox 7 SEVEN not in effect until after arrival of CN 3095-3095 East EAST at Essex. I've got two boxes marked for warrant 2307. That is two and seven over. Axle, one, two, out. 
The loaded oil consist that arrived at Whitefish earlier in the session is being recycled as a 1x2 empty eastbound oil can. I've noticed empty oil trains running in the 1x2 power configuration with a reasonable degree of frequency, and it's not uncommon to see Canadian National Power on these trains as well. Track warrant 2308 CN 3095-3095 East EAST on October 1st, 2023. Xbox 2 TWO, proceed from East EAST sighting switch Whitefish to West WEST Essex on main MAIN track. I've got one box mark for warrant 2308, that is two, over. The oil train slows to a stop at Essex, and once it's clear of the block, the helper crew and BNSF 6625 West continue towards Whitefish.
Having gotten turned around at Mariah Summit, the helper set diverges at Columbia Falls to take the lower level reverse loop. This ensures that the consist is facing the correct direction when it's time to push on the mixed manifest. And with that, we've now seen all of the unit road trains that would typically run during an operating session. I hope you enjoyed that, and be sure to check out my other operations videos. As always, thank you so much for watching, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.